Hello and welcome to my tutorial on displacement time graphs and acceleration time graphs. So we're going to talk about displacement time graphs first. And the displacement against time for an acceleration object always produces a curve. Now, I know what you're thinking, I can't exactly draw curves, so I've drawn a straight line for the purposes of this tutorial. So, in real life they're always a smooth curve but I'm drawing a straight line and it gives you the same sorts of trends. So, if we look at this example, plot a graph for a line who accelerates constantly at 2 meters per second for 5 seconds, with a being 2 and u being 0 we can use s equals u2 plus half a t squared and this gives us s equaling t squared so then you can make your values of t being proportional to s by squaring it squaring 1 is 1, squaring 2 is 4, squaring 3 is 9, squaring 4 is 16, squaring 5 is 25 this is also known as a, um, a inverse square law as when you square something it's always proportional and it can be reversed as well um, so it gives you a, a nice trend like this um, so different accelerations have different gradients so we'll have a look at those different gradients um, well I told you I couldn't do curves before but this is a bigger acceleration on an acceleration time graph and there's another there's another curve here I'll just draw it and sort of like that and smaller acceleration is when the the curve has a smaller gradient so I'll draw another curve here this is like a comparison sort of thing so my apologies has actually got to be higher than the other one to be a smaller gradient and for deceleration it goes in a completely different direction to any of these and you could also find the gradient and it tells you the velocity so the velocity v velocity is the change in displacement so I'll call it delta x because it's, a, it's um, yeah del delta y rather over delta x so that's delta y over over delta x all the time taken so I'll have time here and displacement so I'll put this displacement here and it's the same it's the same for these other ones so it's this here I can write play this time and the, the gradient can be found using this tangent here so you can actually find the gradient by finding the change in y over the change in x and if you do maths then a level maths then you will find drawing tangents to curves very very useful but for physics we just need to know that we need to draw a tangent to the curve and then calculating the gradient at certain fixed points on a scale. I've only drawn sketch graphs for the reference of this tutorial so we'll have a look at some proper questions. Um, describe the motion of the cyclist by the graph shown below so I'll just draw it out for you and here is the curve, the sort of curve, and then like 
that. So if you tell us what happens in parts A, B, C and D, then that will be great. And the second question is, a baby crawls 5 meters in 8 seconds as a constant velocity. She then rests for 5 seconds before crawling a further 3 meters in 5 seconds. Finally, she makes her way back to the starting point in 10 seconds, travelling at a constant speed all the way. Draw a displacement time graph and calculate her velocity at all the different stages of her journey. So I'll give you a 5 second pause and we'll go through the answers. looking through the answers. Um, so A it's accelerating fast, B is a constant velocity so it's a straight gradient. This is why uh, I would prefer to draw curves not to, as not to confuse you as every time I drew a straight line in my sketch diagrams I was assuming a constant velocity in my acceleration time graphs but all acceleration time graphs have curves like that. Um, C is stationary, a uh, fixed acceleration rate, so really no acceleration rate at all. And D is a constant velocity in, in the opposite direction to both A and B. So this doesn't necessarily mean always slowing down, he's, uh, he's decelerating, but he's changing, he has a constant velocity in and up, in and up direction. So looking at question 2 now, we're drawing our displacement time graph. We have A at constant acceleration, B stationary, C acceleration again, D constant velocity in a different direction. So now for part B, we're calculating the velocity um, at different stages of the baby's journey. So at A, it would be 5 over 8 equaling 0.625 ms minus 1, at b v equals 0, um, at c 3 over 5 equals 0 0.6 and at d minus 8 over 10 equals minus 0 0.8 ms minus 1 as she's going in a different direction to all her previous velocities. So that's 0 0.8. Now we move on to when it loads, we want to velocity time graphs. So, greater straight gradient means greater acceleration, and a smaller gradient means a smaller acceleration. Pretty simple. So, acceleration is the change in velocity over the time taken. Um, we can also have the velocities going in different directions. So, this is what that graph, this graph shows, and the speed of the ball something or an object thrown and it changes direction here there's this particular one it's one that changes direction and this one is a constant negative velocity rather now we'll look at this experimental one so this is my set of velocities and my times sketch graph in it we have a constant constant velocity at 1.5 and then it increases by 2.5 meters every second after that. So we can calculate the gradient again by using acceleration equals the change in velocity over the over the time taken and this comes to 11.5 which is the highest velocity you can have and 1.5 the lowest and then that putting that over 4 which is the time taken 4 seconds from 0 to 4 of 8 is 4 seconds that makes 2.5 ms minus 2 so now we'll move on to the next part distance travelled equals the area under the speed time graph loads again so distance equals mean speed times time and if you have velocity against time then we can split it in three sections A, B and C, two triangles and a a rectangle. So to find A we use half times base times height so half times 10 times 40 is 200 B is 20 times 40 or length times width and that makes 800 so and C we do the same thing again with, with A 
half times 15 times 40 is 300, add it all up is 1300 meters. This is the total distance traveled. And now we'll look at non uniform acceleration on a velocity time graph. Non uniform acceleration is a curve. So for one, it's increasing acceleration with an increase in gradient, and two, is decreasing acceleration with a decrease in gradient. Um, you can also use displacement time velocity time graphs using IT and graphing software. So I'm going to show you some graphing software. This website is called uh, Desmos.com. It's very, very cool. You can draw different curves and stuff. And the point about using IT with logging data is that the computer is more accurate than a human. This reduces the human error. And it has a higher sampling rate and you can display it in real time, unlike um, drawing a graph yourself and it takes about 40 minutes at the end of the lesson you want to go to lunch we've all been there so this is drawing it in real time and it will always be this accurate on the computer it's not going to deviate and it's not going to want to go off for lunch um, so we'll now look at some questions when they load again So a skier accelerates uniformly from rest at 2 meters per second down a straight slope. Sketch a velocity time graph for the first 5 seconds of his journey. Use a constant acceleration equation to calculate his displacement. This is one of the four equations of motion or SUVAT equations at t equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds and plot it onto a displacement time graph. Try and be accurate. Um, or, use, or do a s sketch to get the general idea of it. Um, either way, I'm not fussed. Suggest another method of calculating the skier's distance travelled after each second and use it to check your answers to part B. So now we'll move on to the answers. I hope you pause the video before skipping. Naughty people. Um, so you sketch a velocity time graph for the first five seconds, you get a constant graph like this. Woohoo! Um, let me get B using S equals UT plus half AT squared. Something in T equals 1 and we get S equaling 1, T equals 2, S equals 4, T equals 3, S equals um, 9, S equals 9, T equals 4, S equals 16, T equals 5, S equals 25. So then we have C you can calculate the area under the graph by doing half times 5 times 10 equaling 25 meters and then plotting another graph we can suggest that you can times 2s by s or sorry rather the time seconds are 5 so you find your s values by using s equals ut plus half at squared and having 1 to 5 along the bottom here and times in your values by 2 it's the same as square in it and it gets you and it gets, and it gets the um, same answer of 25 um, so that's it for this tutorial I hope you found uh, the displacement time and velocity time graph information useful um, Hope to see you next time for mass, weight and the center of gravity tutorial.